What is up, Story Dive? We are back again to deliver an amazing episode this week. I've actually been waiting a long time to talk about this episode. But before we get into that, hi, how you doing? Hello. How's it going? Um, good. Yeah? It's going pretty good. Yeah. Um, what? Did you, did you have a question? No. I was, I was waiting courteously. For, for a question no i, um, I thought no, someone it's, it's else going good yeah why is that the, are the stories uh di diving in your brain they're definitely diving pretty hard i i've gotten a lot of inspiration of things that i want to discuss on the uh this podcast and these episodes yeah um so i think we have a lot of good stuff coming up um especially through our in between series um, yes our in between series is I, I'm really interested in what people Pretty are. fun. If you if you guys haven't checked it out, I recommend it. We talk about anything and everything uh, that is not story related. So if you're wondering what our interests are outside of stories, uh, be sure to go check that out. Um, but yeah, uh, this week we're going to be talking about villains. We're going to be talking about the, bad, the big baddies of the fictional and non-fictional world. Uh, but... Before we dive into that, do you got a do you got a story of the week for us, Kai? Do you got anything uh, brewing in, the, in that uh, story brain of yours? I do, as a matter of fact. Oh, you do. I oh, got a story. Okay, dude, I'm actually I'm really excited about this. It's it's coming to me, <laughs> okay. right right in the tip of my brain. <laughs> Are you like making cells. it up on the spot, or is this like <laughs> is this a true story? No, no, it's 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 a true story, bro. In, in my brain, I, I thought okay. you were you were like forming this story in your brain, like as we were talking, it was just like melding. You're like, oh man, it's coming to me. <laughs> I can. Feel that would it. be cool. Uh, I I'm not confident enough in my improv skills yet to to be able to do that. But this story, uh, I feel like I'm gonna be calling back on Hawaii once more. Okay. Hey. Uh, hey. I'm just trying to think of a title. Right. Okay. Yeah. Give me. Give me a good title. Okay. This is. I'm calling this. Kai. Kai's first time. At the gym. Kai's no, first no. time. Kai's at... first gains. There we go. Kai's first gains ever. <laughs> uh. <laughs> not ever, but like. <laughs> This is the first time I really knew how to work out. Right. Okay. There or, is a there, there is a difference. It was like there. learning. Yes. It was like you do naturally gain muscle, but in this case, it's like. Anyway, so this is the first time that I actually like felt muscle like be building on me. Yeah. Um, okay. Interesting. So lately, I, I don't know if I've, I've ever been, felt. I that. guess this is irrelevant. It's it. I'll. Maybe you'll recognize the feeling a little bit more. <laughs> okay. I explain as I <laughs> okay. go through this story. <laughs> okay. um, for those who don't know me, uh, well, I guess this is just kind of a life update thing. I've just been getting really into weightlifting and just kind of building muscle on my body. Yeah, that's. I awesome. really enjoy that. I found that to be a really good outlet for me. Yeah, um, I yeah, I, I feel recommend like, yeah. if you want to get into that kind of thing. Yeah, I feel I feel um, that people that are into it swear by it. They're like. Like they're, it's almost like they're addicted to it. Not, not in like an unhealthy way, but like, a, it's something they like genuinely look forward to as part of their schedule. Um, yeah. Which I feel like for people yeah, that don't yeah. do that, it's like, how the heck is that something that you want to do every day? Um, but yeah, right. I, that, that's awesome that you've made it to that point. Honestly, like, congratulations. Thank you. I, I appreciate it because it is a good feeling. But we're going uh, back to the first but time. We're going back. I was a wee lad of nearly 18 years on this earth barely an adult like barely an adult yes had never gotten a gym pass before in my life never i honestly had almost zero idea of what lifting weights was really the only uh interaction i had with that kind of thing was watching a an old goofy cartoon of goofy trying to learn how to exercise. oh wow no for me it was like spongebob and with like was, the stuffed animals 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, or something like that. You know, just in <laughs> yeah. cartoon or in, in yes. silliness, yeah. as, almost as a joke. That was my only exposure to to working out, and I didn't actually have a full grasp on what that looks like. Right. So I went to the gym, and I I fully understand. Like uh, every person that goes to the gym for the first time has the same experience. You uh, walk in and you're like, you might as well be looking at torture devices. Yeah. You have no idea <laughs> what on earth you're looking at with some of these devices. Yeah. But like ro and, the, the rowing machine, dude, like what even is that? Yeah. Um, the rowing machine or the leg bro. press where you push up on what looks like a giant <laughs> ton of cement. Yeah. So, like, some, so, yeah. Some of the, some of the stair are, masters, dude, the stair masters are like, like I, it's crazy how different it, cause they vary. Like some of the same machines that do the same things look very different. Um, depending on like mm -hmm. where you go, but you're, you're, you're absolutely right. right. Like what is this? What am I looking at? Yeah. Well, so yeah, that was my experience. Right. Yes. And I walk in and, uh, I went in with a couple of my other missionaries mentioned this before. I served a two-year mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Hawaii. One of the things we got to do was go to the gym, if you were willing to pay for it from your own pocket. And the oh, gym passed us $60 a month. Oh, so man. It, was, it was pretty expensive, the gym that we went to. Yeah. Um, but, of course, I didn't know any better. How was I supposed to? I had never done anything else. And, uh, and my companions were pretty... Uh, the one that I had at the time, the missionaries I served around were pretty athletic. They're big basketball fans, um, soccer fans, football fans. They they love sports and they wanted to be good at those and they enjoyed going to the gym. All of the above, right? And I come in and remember, this is Hawaii. So there's a lot of Polynesian people here at this, this yes. gym. Uh -huh. And it's one thing to look at a gym for the first time like you just kind of in your own area, depending on your demographic. It's another thing to walk into a gym and pretty much the only other people there are like 275 pound Samoan dudes of pure muscle. Like there's <laughs> nothing, nothing else on them. It's just a wall of death that you're looking at. And every person in the gym looks like that. It was so intimidating. Oh as an 18 gosh. year old with barely any muscle on his body. Yeah. Anyway. So I, I, long story short, I learned some of this, uh, some of these machines, and I learned how to do a bench press for the first time. Uh, yes. Bench, if the first, I warn you, every person that decides to do the bench, the first time you do it, it is going to be heck. It, yeah. Afterward, it's going to be an insane amount of soreness, but then after that, it gets easier every single time. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's super awkward at first, but there's there's a there's a reason that everyone does the bench. Anyway, I was super intimidated because I'm really scrawny, and the other missionaries there was like my super athletic companion, and then straight up, not even kidding, this like six foot five Samoan dude who weighed about probably three hundred pounds of just sheer muscle, enormous guy. This guy gets down. And puts like 300 pounds on this, this bar, which is a lot of weight to push up. He basically benches his weight as a warm up. He's doing this like it's air. I don't even see him sweat. He's having a full conversation with everyone else as he's pushing 300 pounds off of his chest. Wow. Dude, that's crazy. So I'm pretty intimidated. I'm feeling like, man, I want to be this these guys i want to yeah. i want to pull my weight i want to look cool i want to feel cool i want to feel part of everything yeah so i want to join the club um, I join the muscle boys join the club yeah so i <laughs> i learned how to do the bench and it's it's heck and this is like two or two or three times into the gym at this point i'm like i can do this I got this. So I do the bench without a spotter, which is pretty much one of the dumbest things you could do. Yeah. Uh, Unless yeah. you're like yeah. really well knowledge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was like, I just need to know what my limit is so that I can build oh, off no. that. Right. That's what you do. When you, weight lift. you learn oh, your limit no. and you build off of that limit. But usually 
you do this with a spider present. Yes. <laughs> and no one seemed to necessarily tell me that that was something that was supposed to happen. Like they and saw the you, other they seemed to understand. Did that they that see was... you by yourself and they didn't say anything? I don't know. I can't speak whatsoever for whatever like was going through their heads. There is a chance that they just didn't even see me or either didn't care or that, you know, we're all super young. We don't right. understand social right. cues very well. And I mean, I still, I still stuff. don't. So anyway, <laughs> so. <laughs> it's, it, it's a lifelong journey. Yeah. It's but a, uh, yeah. from here, this is where it gets like interesting. So I put on, I, I do the bar, just the bar itself. It's like 45 pounds. Uh -huh. Pretty easy. I was actually really impressed with myself. Mm. I put on 10 pounds of weight, you know, and I put on a bit more weight. Put on a bit more, and I'm doing one just once, just to see how it feels. And I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. And I get about to 125, which is, it's not incredible, but it's nothing to. It's not. It's it's, it's decent, right? That's a, it's, that's it's a, a bit of weight. Point. It's a bit of weight, especially for like a 18 year old. Like I don't know if you were like pretty skinny back then, but like, I feel like 125 not, was. I probably... mean, I was skinny when I entered my mission, but then it was like a biking area, so I was on a bike a lot. So, right. you know, I, I, I also kind of ended up just gaining some natural muscle being Polynesian myself. Yeah. I'm just but, thinking about when I was 18, this, this, I, I weighed 140 pounds. So it's like, that would have been a lot for me. I feel like. Uh huh. Well, so in my mind, I'm thinking I got this. Yeah. Like, I'm doing yeah. great. I'm doing so good. I'm doing better than I ever thought I would. I'm feeling the absolute hype. Like I'm getting that feeling. It's coming to me in a in a Jimmy Neutron brain blast. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm getting hit with the. Yeah. I can feel it. I know why people do this. Yeah. This is so fun. I push up, and halfway up, my arms just stop. It's there's no pain. There's no like anything else. It's just that my arms don't push up any further. Yeah. And it's not high enough to put it on the rest that's sitting on. So here I am just sitting here and my arms, no matter how hard I push, don't go up, but they're not necessarily like reaching back down towards my neck. It's just, yeah. I'm stuck. I'm completely yes. frozen. And I'm like, dude, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I'm just stuck. I'm stuck here. None of the other missionaries can see me or hear me. Maybe they can, but I, I have no idea where they are. And I felt scared to even raise my voice because what if I raise my voice and my air goes out and then I start to deflate. So I'm just stuck here. And I'm stuck here for a good like minute and a half before it <laughs> but this minute and a half is like the longest life threatening minute and a half of my yeah, entire life. Uh -huh. Everything started coming into question. Why did I choose to do this? Why am I even here right now? What am I doing here? Am I doing the right thing? I should never have touched this. I, I if I just put two veins, you know, all of these thoughts coming out in just yeah. like haze. Like your life flashing was like, before your eyes. Seriously. But it, <laughs> yeah. it's weird that it wasn't super panicky. It just was like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I'm frozen. Yeah, I'm just locked uh, in place. Yep. And for a second, I straight up thought that like all the other missionaries just like left the facility and left me to die right here. So, uh, you know, this is a really scary experience. And right as I start to see myself deflate a little bit, uh, one of the other Samoan guys takes my 125 pound weight, right? I'm not, at this point, I'm not necessarily doing doing anything to assist him in lifting this right i'm yeah. just like preventing myself from crumpling and dying um he takes it with one hand one hand and he lifts 125 pounds like it's nothing uh at least three or four feet in the air and sets it on top and he's like how about it you gotta watch what you're doing pretty good though nice gains and then he walked away oh my god <laughs> dude pretty good though i set up <laughs> I sat up and I'm like, what the freak just happened? I was saved and oh like uplifted gosh. and and I, I looked around and what annoyed me most is that one of the missionaries is at the bench right next to me. He saw the whole thing. He was just, just watching you thing. like struggle? He wasn't even... No, he was he was doing his own workout, but he oh, did put the 
wait up and look at me. He like he looked. And, oh, okay. And well, so he was aware like, of, of somebody. What was should, yeah, it's like he should have. I mean, I, maybe he didn't know either, or whatever. Like maybe he was in that same headspace. Right. I don't. You know, a I can't put any blame on him. No, but I know, I was but kind it's of like. I'm not, I'm not like calling him out specifically, but I like I'm just very surprised that not a single person in the vicinity was like, "Bro, you shouldn't be doing this without a spotter," you know. But who knows? Maybe, right. <laughs> maybe that gym. They're like, "No, nah, man, you guys, everyone's on their own in this gym. Every man for himself." Needless to say, I would not be here today without that that yeah. man. Yeah, what a lifesaver, dude! I'm and a hero. And and you got those gains, you know. And I got the gains. Yeah, the gains. I was so freaking sore. I couldn't lift my shoulders like above. I like I couldn't lift my arms above my shoulders for like three days. Yeah, it's was crazy. So in pain. It's crazy because I think I feel like the human body's meant to do stuff like that, like all the time. It's meant to be worked like that. Like not necessarily like to the point where you can't move, but like. It's just crazy how it's so drastic. The lifestyle people live these days versus, you know, what you do in the gym. It's like so drastic. So like when people do decide to work out, I feel like that's why it's such a big shock when like, like you get incredibly sore and it's incredibly painful and difficult and uncomfortable. Whereas uh, I feel like back in the day, it's like if you were a farmer, if you, you know, did like anything before like the 1800s or whatever like stuff was very like you, you were using your body a lot um so it's just interesting it's just interesting how like people these days have to kind of discover that working out to actually a good thing <laughs> like you, your body feels good and your mind feels good when you when you actually use it right so yeah so there, there's my story yeah yeah, that's super cool though. That you, because uh, like I, the reason why I went off like that was you were uh, talking about how you, in that story you were like, "I'm feeling it," right? Like I, this is why people do this, you know. Um, uh, which I think is yeah. a, re a really cool realization to have that a lot of people, you know, want to have but maybe haven't gotten there yet, you know. Um, so I'm just glad I didn't die right yeah. after i had that <laughs> yeah yeah so. you're like this is it this is why people do this and then it's like it just cuts to like an ambulance it's just like uh oh yeah <laughs> um well cool man uh that that was an awesome story i uh I, I can just imagine those giant samoan guys in there just like uh i don't know like i'm also picturing like the uh the mob psycho muscle club um like it's what is it called yeah. the, the body appreciation club or whatever um right yeah but just like just some not quite like that just i know but like just some jacked guys that are just into it and they're all homies they're, they all just they just care about getting getting ripped you know that's all that, that's that's why they're there so um okay right. well uh well, these people are like playing with the weights like toys yeah which is nuts which speaking of speaking of ripped people jacked people uh there are some villains out there that are just monsters they 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 are you know uh some of the most powerful looking guys uh you'll ever see and that's what we're going to be talking about today um and i i wanted to start this topic by asking you are we keeping this conversation strict on jacked villains or just villains in general? No, no, I was just trying to segue between your story. I was just trying to like you know. Oh, gotcha. Um, <laughs> no, I mean we can. I mean, we can, but there are some good villains that are not jacked. So we need to talk about them too. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to start by asking you, what are, your, what are some of your favorite villains? Let's just like throw some out there. Favorite villains? Yeah, and don't think too hard about it. Just like. One that immediately comes to mind. Yeah, okay. So one one that immediately comes to mind, Sandman. Sandman. Uh, from the Spider-Man. Yeah. Universe. Yeah, I, I actually I, really like I forget Sandman. I forget his real name. Um cuz he's not he he wasn't always Flint Marco. Sandman. Yeah, Flint Marco, that's right. Um Yeah, he I think that that is a very good that's a very good pick. Um okay, let let's name a few others. Uh 
I was going to say, he's not necessarily like my top one, but right. I don't know. I, I'm not sure I could give you a top one right off the No, back. no, no. You, I just, you don't have to give me your favorites um, necessarily. I'm just like trying to like throw out like what is your idea of a villain kind of a thing. Like just throw out some of you, some of the, the like when, when I say villain, what comes to your brain? You know, like. Okay. Uh, I would say. Um, I mean, just because we've been talking about it recently, like Ganondorf is mm, a pretty good villain. Yes. Um, yep. Ganondorf's a great one. Many of his iterations are really, really good. Yes. Um, the Reapers from Mass Effect are excellent villains. Okay. I would say. Nice. It's interesting though, because those that's more of a villain faction. They're they don't have too much of a. I mean, there is one specific Reaper that you you kind of talk to, but mostly you just kind of uh, interact with like the species, the Reaper. Yeah, which is kind of interesting in its own right. Right. Uh, so it's almost like because in, in like excellent a, villain. Yes, Darth Vader is an excellent villain. Um. You know, some that come to my mind are like Kingpin, uh, Cell from Dragon Ball Z, or like Frieza. Obviously, yeah. everyone, everyone knows who Frieza is. Uh, in fact, I would say Frieza is more of a villain than Cell is in a lot of ways. Um, you know, you've got, uh, you know, Mar Marvel has a bunch of villains. Uh, you know, you have like Bowser and like Eggman from Sonic and Dr. Wily from Mega Man. And, yeah, Eggman's a good villain. Um, yeah, yeah, of course, Ganondorf. Bison, M. Bison's pretty good. M. Bison, uh, Magneto. Uh, I feel like he's a pretty poster. Magneto. Villain. Oh, I love Magneto as a yeah. villain. I'm not, I'm not, I yeah. love Magneto. I'm not saying he's a, like, I, cause I think he is, I think he's a great villain from just from what I've heard, but uh, he's definitely one of those villains where he's like, He's one of those villains that you think of when you think of villain, right? He's just like the epitome of what, like, especially for comics. He's like the comic villain, um, like Doctor Doom as well. Um, right. Just like, oh, there he is. You yeah, Doctor um, Doom is really good. But yeah, so yeah, these. So now I want to dive. Like, so what makes these villains in your eyes good villains? Like, what what makes them villainy? <laughs> and and you, you don't have to go super in depth but just like i'm trying to find at least in uh in your thoughts like what do you think sets these guys apart from like other characters what do they all have in common yeah um okay i'll go with magneto because i've thought about magneto a lot uh, okay i'm a big personally i think the best thing that Marvel has ever come out with was the original X-Men. Okay. That, um, I think that is a very fair garbage, thing. Whatever they're doing now. <laughs> but I think the X-Men... Uh, I'm talking... When I talk X-Men, I mean like your classic Cyclops, Jean Grey, Storm Beast, mm -hmm. um, Wolverine, Professor X, uh, Rogue, Gambit. That's it. You know? Of oh, course, okay. there are some other ones that I would love. Like Colossus, I love Colossus. Uh, I love Shadow Cat, Iceman. Wait, did you say Wolverine uh, already? I did say Wolverine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but but those kind of those characters are kind of in my mind second generation X Men, which I'm okay with. I I actually do really like second gen X Men. Okay, um, I see, I see what you're saying. You kind of like Pokemon and and stuff. Where yeah, it's like yeah yeah, yeah you like you have like the OG not and the then... predecessors. Yeah. So anyway, with with that being said, um, I, at some point they started to get a little too far and a little too weird with it. Um, but Magneto as a character, as a villain, is incredibly interesting to me because it's one of the things that makes him so interesting as a villain and so iconic to me is you can see exactly where he's coming from, and you almost can't blame him for what he does mm. and for why he does it. Mm. Okay. Okay. So if any, for people who are not, I mean, a lot of people are familiar with Magneto, but the X-Men are actually not necessarily a super wildly, uh, not as well known and as kind of forefront of Marvel's like face 
as Avengers are. Like a lot more right. people know who the Avengers are from the right. movies and stuff. Right. So for anyone who's not familiar with Magneto, he is a mutant. Mutants get special powers usually around puberty because of something they have called the X gene. Right. Which manifests itself in a number of different powers slash ailments because they are powers, but they also occasionally are ailments more often yes. than not. I mean, that's what makes um, X-Men cool is because X-Men, it's not just, oh, I'm I'm a superhero. It's like, it's kind of like a double-edged sword for all of their powers. Like they're, they're, they right. help them, but yeah. they also hurt them. And it's like, you have to learn how to control it. Exactly. Or yeah. you have to learn how to use it in, in circumstance. So right. the X-Men as a whole is an amazing exploration of humanity. Yes. Um, uh -huh. I could get into that on a whole another time, but yeah. Magneto specifically is a mutant that he's Jewish and he was in the. Ah, um, okay. I, th this is news to me. I, I, I don't know this. Yeah. So this is, this is, um, Oh man, what's his actual name? Uh, uh, Magneto's actual name? I can't. Yeah. Here, you keep describing. Eric Lynch. Eric Lynch. Oh, you there found it. Okay. Uh, Eric. In Lynchar? my brain, it. it... Lynchar. Lynchar. Eric. For just we can refer to him as Eric in this instance. Okay. Sure. He watched his his parents be taken away from him, right in front of him during okay. this horrible time of extreme prejudice an extreme discrimination towards a very specific people for um, what they believed in and who they were. Right. Yeah. For something that they, that wasn't necessarily theirs to choose. Um, they didn't always choose to be Jewish. Right. Right. Um, so he watches his parents be torn away from him and he, that's when his powers manifest and he takes the fences around the facility and he, strangles the the nazis in that situation he escapes oh, but his parents do die his parents oh die. man so, so it's, it's this incredibly dark past and yes. when he meets xavier for the first time and they create kind of what what was known as kind of the prototype x-men um magneto was part of that this is kind uh, of where x-men okay. first class plays well so magneto is is trying to be the hero that Professor Xavier wants him to be. But his hurt past, his, his dealing with and his trauma of being discriminated against and, and hurt and basically tried to be killed based on his ethnicity as, as a Jewish person creates a barrier in him that he can't, he can't fight that barrier. And so he becomes uh, kind of his own faction of mutants. And that's when he starts to don the term Magneto. As, and it's supposed to be a title almost of terror. You don't cross Magneto um, because he'll, he'll kill you. And he's, he becomes very radicalized against non-mutants. And he believes that mutants are the next step of human evolution and that everyone else should step aside for mutants Bro, that's because crazy. they are superior. That's crazy though, because the uh, the whole like the whole ah, spaghetti thing like that is all stemmed off of like superior race complex, and so he kind of like right his yeah. own version of that. That that kind of is weird to me because I feel like he'd be against that after what happened to him. Well, sort of, because he in in some iterations of him, he ends up believing that he's a superior race. There's other iterations where he creates Asteroid M, um, where it's a it's basically a mutant safe haven. It's kind of like a moon where he uh, takes mutants that don't want to be on the world anymore, and he uh, takes them okay. up to the asteroid and they leave. They just straight up leave. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. He determines that it's there's so many different ways that he handles this problem. Right, but um, the way the way you're talking about him doesn't make him seem like a villain to me. I mean, except for the well, part where he wants to kill people. <laughs> right, he he still believes that he is the superior race. That in his villain, the asteroid M kind of arc is kind of his uh, his personal wrestle with this whole situation. But this is what I feel like makes Magneto so interesting 
when he is being a villain, he is acting the exact same way that he was acted upon. He's just inflicting it on other people. Uh, okay, so so what I'm getting from this is that what makes Magneto a good villain is that he's relatable. Like he his his character arc seems very genuine and realistic, kind of a thing. Like yeah, yeah. He, okay, he, it's almost like yes, he is so evil, right? But at the same time, like I said before, you almost can't blame him for what happened to him. Right. You can understand his his vein of thought you can also understand that it's wrong i think universally we understand that villains or we should understand that villains uh, their actions to inflict harm on others is wrong right we can yes. understand it's wrong but what's interesting is it's a very good exploration into why it's wrong okay okay so i could i can agree with you right because i think of some of my favorite villains and it's weird because some of them don't go along this logic but there are some that do like i love kingpin from daredevil the show daredevil um for a lot of the same reasons you were saying about magneto where when you the more you learn about that guy the more you're like no wonder he ended up this way you know like he is right. bad to the bone he is messed up and psychotic and he's a he's a freaking murderer but if when you look at his his backstory at least in the show it's it is brutal right and it's like heaven forbid you holy. embarrass him in front of vanessa right but it's like the reason why he has these attachment issues <laughs> the reason why he's so impulsive and violent the reason why right. he kind of hides yeah. it all inside and it comes out explosively like it's all explained in his backstory and it it makes sense to a degree you know um of course, it's hard. It's hard for any story to be like 100% genuine because, you know, sometimes there's stuff that happens in my life where I'm like, how is this even real? So, um, so in that, in that right. way, I, I guess it I is just, genuine. But the reason I brought that up is because I really love that, that bit. Yeah. Of so him I, just like going freaking off the rails. He's just like, <laughs> you embarrassed me in front of Vanessa. And yeah. then he beheads someone with the door. It's like, holy. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like in Spider Verse, you know, like his, the whole reason why the the multidimensional whatever is even happening like he literally made he he got scientists to make a multi world dimensional portal just so he could bring Vanessa back like that guy's crazy for Vanessa but um yeah so i i wanted to maybe delve into the other side where what about the what about the guys that are less relatable okay because I think Ganondorf, at least in Ar Ocarina of Time and in Wind Waker, Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker, Ganondorf actually fall into that Magneto camp of like, oh, the, I actually understand how we got here. But then there's the guys where I don't really know how we got here, but I still like it. Um, and okay. Uh, go ahead. You finish your thought, and then I have a... a I just thought of a character on this realm that you're talking about. Um, well, it's weird because I, I do have a character in mind, but he's kind of a, um, it's kind of like a spoiler for One Piece. So I actually don't want to bring him up, even though I want to talk about him. So I'm trying to think if there's anyone else, maybe Frieza, maybe, because I'm trying to think of like, there are plenty of villains out there that are like, they are just murderers. Like they just enjoy killing people. Right. But like, Sometimes those right. people are very cool and they're very like, like even like, cause like some, for some of them, I don't know their backstory. And yet I still think they're like incredibly cool and effective villain. Um, mm. You know what I mean? Without that whole human side. Okay. So do you, are there right, any examples yeah. that are coming to your um, mind? I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of a different example on my end. First one that comes to mind for me is Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. Okay. Um, he can you he explain definitely more? Falls into that line of yeah. Okay, so uh, just like Spark Notes of Sub Zero, he is part of the Lin Kuei. It's a ninja society in the realm of Mortal Kombat, and he um, murders Scorpion and his family uh, because they're a rival uh, ninja clan, the Shirai Ryu, uh -huh. um, and that's it. It's just their rival. And he is like, I don't want this rival here. So he kills them. And of course, this leads to Scorpion 
um, coming back from what's it's like their equivalent of the afterlife is the nether realm. Scorpion comes back as a demon, kills Sub Zero, and then Sub Zero comes back from the nether realm and kills Scorpion. It's just kind of this like back and forth between the two. But Sub Zero is pretty constantly um, just a character that like seeks power and okay. kills Scorpion and everyone he loves to do it every single time. In, so, in so many different multiverses, that's like his so it's like thing. There's, just, there's no other kill. reason for him to kill people other than for like his own gain. Like it's a very like self-centered. Just for his own gain, yeah, and and for power, just to be able to be the leading, uh, like ninja faction in, wow. on the planet. Yeah, so that but does that does seem a little removed. Such a fan favorite, though. yeah. I mean, I mean, fighting games are interesting because. Usually you can get attached to a character without knowing anything about them. Uh, just from like how they act and what their moves are and if they're cool. Um, which is because for me, that's my only experience with Sub-Zero is uh, whenever I play him in either Mortal Kombat or uh, Injustice. And I think he's really cool because he looks like a ninja. He's blue, which is one of my favorite colors. And he uses ice powers, which are pretty cool. So that's why I like him. But I, I it's nothing about like his actual story like you just told me was why i liked him um interesting but i didn't okay, I, I didn't I even i didn't even see him know. as a villain okay yeah yeah hit me uh godzilla ah godzilla. Not, not legendary movie godzilla not right. like the the american ones i'm talking like godzilla godzilla yeah because there's like godzilla like the, the, the godzilla hero is a villain and then there's godzilla like the freaking apocalypse bringer you know like <laughs> so yes yeah godzilla the apocalypse bringer is the one i'm talking about okay a villain with no inspiration other than to simply destroy right and like there's no real reason because like i'm I, in dragon ball z there's kid boo who's very similar to that he's just like a being of destruction his whole purpose is to like blow up planets like that's just why he exists is the just be this wild force of nature. But the thing is, he's kind of like not human. And I feel like in a lot of ways, you could look at Godzilla in that context as like, this isn't someone who actually thinks for himself. He's just like, like a wild animal who needs to destroy things, you know, yeah. like, so it's interesting how when you remove the humanity, it's like almost like, okay in a way because you're like oh it's just this is just something that we have to deal with um it, it's not about my side and their side it's just my side you know what i mean in, in that context um i don't know it, it, do you yeah, think that yeah. do you think that fits the whole godzilla thing um or do you think there's more to it than that yeah it it does it's it it's interesting because when godzilla has uh almost like a carnal desire to destroy things it really takes you the the storyteller doesn't have to spend time trying to help the reader or the consumer understand where Godzilla is coming from they just know to fear Godzilla and to fight back and you can focus a lot more of your story on those elements rather than trying to get them to understand the villain yeah yeah cuz so okay so here's another example of kind of what i was getting to um so I don't spoil anything about One Piece. Um, in Hunter x Hunter, uh, one of the antagonists throughout the series is named Hisoka. He is this white jet, like he has white skin. He has like a star in a in a like water drop on his face and pink hair. Like he's a, he's very much like a jester kind of character. But his whole thing is that he just love like his whole personality is he wants to fight people that are stronger than or like as strong as him he wants kind of like the one punch man like he wants a challenge but he's such a weird and creepy guy and he will shed blood for fun and he pretty much just doesn't care about you if you're not strong um you know but like he throws playing cards as weapons he does some of the most morbid stuff i've seen to win fights uh he has one of the most interesting powers his his music is like freaking uh what do you call it like spaniard guitar it's like freaking epic um 
And for some reason, I love this guy, even though he is like a bad dude. He will just he will just cut people down for no reason. And the main characters of the show who are like little kids, like he gets real creepy with them. And it's it's kind of like not OK in a lot of ways. Um, but he just he he loves like because he he's interested in the kids because he's like they're going to be strong when they get older. So he's like, I want to help them get stronger so that when they are strong, I can fight them because that's all I care about. Um, which is, I feel like that's an interesting yeah. character, but I feel like if you look at who he is, it's like there should be no reason why I like this guy. And yet I just think he is so interesting. And I, I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of people who are like, they, they just love the fight. They love the art of fighting and like, they just want a challenge. Like I, I love those kind of archetypes, but he is one of the stranger ones. And um, yeah, I, I, the thing is, I don't know anything about his backstory. I don't know anything about where he came from, why he's like this. And I still really enjoy him, even though he is like a straight up serial killer. Like um, what do you think that does that, what do you take away from that? Like, does that, do you think I am weird for do, liking that or like how how can you how can you like a... someone like that? How can you like a character like that that goes so against like the morals that like maybe I believe in kind of a thing? Uh, well, it's I think it's one thing. This is an interesting concept um, that I feel very strongly about. That it does kind of fall into the realm of uh, gender slash race swaps, but I won't get into that here. Okay. Um. But it's it's the same general concept that I'm about to talk about. You 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 enjoy this character and you like this character a lot, but it's not like you idolize this character. You don't see yourself in this character. Yeah, mm-hmm. you just you just see uh, either an exploration into a world that you don't think about, oh. or there's something fascinating about the dark. Kind of how we when we talked about in mystery, we we find a great we take great interest in exploring excuse me the the wrongdoings of others and why yeah. that takes place because yes. we as a human race for the most part are generally a good good people we want to be good yes. people we want yes. to do what is considered morally good in whatever context and society mm-hmm. that takes place and villains are an exploration into a world that is generally deemed unacceptable in society. Um, yeah, no, you're you, you totally can't right. Murder in society, you can't steal. You can't uh, be creepy to children for good reason, right? There, we have there are laws in society to prevent this kind of action. Yes, uh, and villains are kind of a way for the human experience or the, what we consider humanity to explore those realms of what's not okay to understand really why yeah and i think it is Uh, a it's a mixture for sure because i see aspects that i do agree with and that i do like about this character like that i see myself in but then there's that part of him that is that like that that's the part of me that i would never do in real life right like the 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 kind of the analyzing the dark parts of humanity so it's like a mixture of that which just makes this super interesting character to me because I like relate to him, but then I don't right. relate to him. And then I'm like, but why is he like this? You know, and it's, yeah, but yeah, wait, wait. So what, what, what well, did you have to say? Oh, uh, you, you just reminded me of a good statement about villains that I've thought about. Ooh. Um, some, someone said it was actually a smash coach that said this, but he, he was talking about what makes a hero and what makes a villain. And this, this doesn't just talk about, how heroes are made in stories, but it's like how heroes and villains are made in real life. This is how it works. If that, if this, that makes sense. Okay. He I'm goes ready. on this, this monologue. Yeah. So regardless of whether you're a hero or a villain, you can be a completely neutral person and bad things will happen to you. That's just a way of life. The example he uses is Batman and the Joker, because of course they're some of the most iconic well-known hero and villain yes. out there. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they go toe-to-toe. You know, to toe, Batman you know? alongside... Yeah. yeah, they go toe-to-toe, and they're kind of two, two 
opposite sides of the coin from each yes. other, and I'll explain why. Yes. They have a very similar backstory. Um, both of them watch their parents die in front of them. Batman watches his parents get shot, and same for Joker. The difference between them is they're both placed with this this uh kind of on the fence tragedy. This this thing that happens in their life that might not necessarily be in their control. And it's what they decide to do, what their response is to that action that determines whether or not they're a hero or villain. Um, Batman decides mm. to use the things he was given to make sure that that never happens again to anyone else, that no one else has to watch their family um, die in front of them, right? Right. He actively decides to make a change for good to serve others and to be a better person right. because of this tragedy. Right. And then can I, cause I, I think Joker I, sees this. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the Joker wants other people to suffer the way he did. Exactly. Like he, he wants them to experience exactly his loss. Goes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, I just was it, like, I, I, so, I know what you're going to say. I know, I know what he's doing. No, no, my thunder, <laughs> it's been stripped from me. No, no, I just, uh, it's okay. I, ooh, I, I can I feel it in my bones. I the thunder to you, and I, I let you get the, the thunder touch. Dude, yeah, yeah, Avatar style, and now I'm sending it back, you know? You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Send it back, subtle. Um, <laughs> well, so that, that's oh, the good. thing, where it's um, a hero will do good based off of the tragedies that happen to them, and a villain will actively try and harm others and bring others to the same miserable state that they are. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. That. That's, yeah. That's awesome. That is actually a really good point to bring up about villains because it's almost like villains have to go through something terrible. Like it's, it's like most villains, I would say, have a tragic backstory. Not that. Uh, that is only a villain thing because I feel like mo like there's a lot of people that have tragic backstories in you know any form of media you can watch, and you're absolutely right. Where I feel like the villains are the ones that kind of they internalize it and they take it out on other people. A lot of hatred, a lot of anger, and you know fear and misunderstanding and all that stuff. Whereas the the heroes, uh, kind of like I don't know, they're put in a circumstance where they feel empowered to change the world or to change what's around them and prevent what is happening again or maybe they have a mentor figure that shows them like how the world really is or whatever you know and it's like it's just so interesting how i feel like people do go through those moments when they grow up that kind of morph what path they're going to go on um right so that is very that's very interesting that's a very interesting and uh, let's see, because I, I wanted to talk a bit about, because we have villains and we have heroes, right? Obviously. Do you need, you need a hero for a villain to exist? Uh, I would actually almost say the opposite. You need a, because a villain can exist regardless of whether or not there's a hero to stop him. Right. I think it's it's a a villain is a hero rises to meet the needs of taking out a villain. Darth Vader still existed for four decades without a Luke Skywalker to challenge him. I mean, yes, yes he had the Star Wars extended universe. Like I, I'm sure like big Star Wars fans are just rolling in their grave as I say that. Um but look, I mean, what I mean is like Luke Skywalker was a hero that rose to meet the challenge that was Darth Vader. You know, Aang was the hero that rose to be the one to suppose, supposedly save uh, the world from the Fire Nation, right? Yes. Uh, so I think a hero cannot exist without a villain, but a villain can technically ah, exist yes i mean they would be almost in kind of like a limbo victorious state i actually think in a weird way uh mega mind goes into this it's actually an exploration of this concept of what is a villain 
Without yeah, it it's true. It's true. Yeah, that Megamind's a great movie for this whole topic. Um, but you you reminded me because I I played through Castlevania Symphony of the Night recently, and bro, Alucard, the main character, Dracula's son, that guy is dropping freaking banger after banger one liners throughout the whole game. And when you beat it, this is what he says to Richter, um, and it's 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 exactly what we're talking about. So he says, uh, "What you must remember is that." Uh, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Um, which is pretty much what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up because shout out to Alucard. What a guy. Um, it, it's true, I guess. Yeah, so heroes are born out of the n- necessity of overcoming conflict and evil and, uh, you know, uh, uh, oppression like whatever the word is right like uh whenever like it's like a, a need right for because i i feel like usually once the evil is like defeated the hero kind of like just goes back to being a normal guy you know um most of the time it's right. like he, heroes or, or heroes come and, and go some sort yeah. of smaller villainy yeah but like i feel like heroes are a temporary thing to kind of like balance things out again um when the, t- the scales tip too far in one direction. Um, okay. So now I want to talk about, um, cause uh, it, it, this is so interesting to me because you have antagonists, you have protagonists. Those aren't necessarily heroes and villains. Those are different things. Um, and I kind of wanted to discuss the, cause we, we mentioned this in the mystery episode a little bit, but you have the cases of death note and the cases of, Breaking Bad, where the main characters are kind of the villain, even though they're like the protagonist on paper, if that makes sense. So how does how does that work? How can you have the villain be the main character? Would they actually be the hero from their perspective and the villain would be people trying to stop their goal? Or is villain a term uh, that can can it be loosely, or do villains have to inherently be doing something that is morally wrong in the public eye? Well, I think this is interesting to think about because I I do still consider Light Yagami and the uh, what is his name Walter? Yeah, Walter White from Breaking uh-huh. Bad. Is that his name, Mister White? <laughs> I they are still villains. It, like. This is something that I do think society is starting to fall apart on in in the realms of media of like, quote unquote, what is a villain? Because they keep trying to tell these stories of villains doing like good things and suddenly that redeems them and suddenly they're not a villain. No, no, they're they're still Harley Quinn to me. No, no, she's still a villain. I do not care. (laughs) Yeah. One bit. for Harley Quinn. Like, I don't know why there's this weird fascination with the the suicide squad of like being this hero team they're not they're not they're murderers end of story they're yes. horrible psychopathic murders well and, and and like yeah uh i i think that that humanity side the like that you mentioned earlier go comes into play here where the reason why we want to root for light and we want to root for walter white is because we kind of see where they're coming from doesn't necessarily mean that what they're doing is good but like, especially with Walter White, light, light less so. Uh, but with Walter White, it's like, dude, the dude it was like a normal guy put into some extreme circumstances. And that's kind of just the path that he went down. He didn't even necessarily mean to become a crime mob boss that ended up killing a couple. Like he, he kills like, I don't know, at least I don't know. He kills a bunch of people in the show. So it's like he, en- he ends up in this place well, where it's like you're definitely kind of a villain but in the beginning of the show not so much in the beginning of the show he, he seems kind of like a relatable guy who's just going on this crazy adventure you, you know like so it, it, it's almost like it's his origin story for becoming a villain almost in a way whereas yeah right. same same with light but light it's like pretty clear from the get-go that this guy's not exactly Doesn't light kill like <laughs> 20% of the population. Is that the end? I, is it 20 or 40? It's Someone like, fact check me on that. I think it's, it's only it's a huge percentage. I think it's only in Japan. Mainly. I think he really only sticks to I Japan. Know, he, I think in season two, he goes international with it. Well, maybe he does, bro. I don't. 
it's something crazy. I just remember near or the the guy that finally figures him out is like an American uh, spy or something like that. Anyway, I, I clearly need to go rewatch. Death yeah, me Death too. But to I, full story there. I think it's clear that like with light, it's like we we're kind of Ryuk in that show where we're we're kind of it's like watching a train wreck where you just like you're just so interested in like how is this gonna play out. You're not necessarily like, bro, Light is my hero. I, I want to be like him. I'm sure that there's some people out there that think that. And I, I hope that I hope nothing comes of that. But um, the on the Walter it's, White side, it's, it seems well, way okay. more it seems way more relatable on his side. But they're both villains that are the main character. So would they qualify as protagonists? Is that or like what's the definition they, of they protagonist? Do. So here's the. The protagonist simply is the person that the story is focused around. Okay. The main the main character is the protagonist. Yes. The antagonist is supposed to be the character that um stops the protagonist from reaching their goal. So okay. the antagonist for Death Note would be the police. You know, and that it's interesting because Death Note does flip very masterfully the hero and villain on its head and makes the villain the protagonist and the hero or the yeah the heroes the antagonist however i do think i think it's still very important to make the distinction that light yagami is a villain he's very yes. clearly a villain. Yep. he is very no clearly a villain. possible way you can justify that you cannot yes. justify in any way that what he is doing is right you know, right. I, I guess it, they do go into kind of a dialogue of exploration on what is right and wrong in that instance. That's a conversation for another time. The point I'm trying to make is um, those stories very, very masterfully uh, play into that exploration that humans have, like you said, with Ryuk, being, playing Ryuk. You want to see just how far they can take this, <laughs> yeah. even though you know it's messed up. You know <laughs> yeah. it's wrong. You still have this fascination just to see how much they can get away with before they finally face their justice. Right, right. But you want them to face their justice as well. Like you want that to happen, and you, you. But you also want. I don't know. It's like we're so interested in, uh, like things being interesting, like our our curiosity. And everything for like what's gonna happen but like you don't want it to end too early you know but you also don't want him to get away with it so it's like it's, you have to find that middle ground um but yeah dude, it's man so yeah that's super interesting to me uh when they put villains because i have a question written down here um do villains okay. have to be bad because we've kind of been talking about this but like do they do villains have to be bad you know, for lack of a better term, like I could, I could say, do villains have to, you know, partake in morally unjust actions and beliefs? If you want to get more specific, uh, but like, so like, are there any examples no. of villains that aren't necessarily bad people? Um, and I'm, ta I'm like, you know, it's, I, it's I, interesting. Yeah. Because the very this is an interesting concept. Because the very notion that someone is a villain is like what defines a villain is that they do something that is morally wrong to, to endanger or harm another person. That's right. a like that's basically by definition what a villain is. We could look it up, I guess. But so if if you're not doing anything bad, how then would you be classified as a villain? So I here's an example that comes to my mind, and this is a one piece example I can use. One of my favorite characters, his name is Katakuri, which means dog tooth. Um, this guy, uh, without getting into too much detail, uh, essentially Luffy and his crew want to leave this island. They have to get out of here. And Katakuri is the strongest guy on that island. And he's like, not on my watch. And him and Luffy end up going to this place where no one can, like, it's just them. Like, so they, they end up trapping themselves in this area where only they can be in there. and they trap themselves in there where essentially like they have to fight and someone has to come out on top. And as the fight is going on, they learned, they actually end up getting more and more respect for each other as the fight's going on. And it becomes more of like a rivalry and less of like, but even though he's like, he's like definitely like 
one of the main antagonists of the entire arc and he's made out to be like the villain of this island or whatever and but like by the end of it they're like actually friends <laughs> which is crazy um even though he was made out to be the villain of the arc so it's like in a lot of ways you would you would put him up there with the other villains in one piece but he's different because he's not really a bad dude he didn't like kill any of like the characters he's not like a murderer he's he's got like he's honestly like someone that you'd put up there with some of your favorite characters he he was just on the opposite side you know what i mean it's almost like if 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 you are if two like parties are at war with each other uh does it make the other side are they villains for you or would you call that something else cuz you know, maybe maybe the the two people in charge of the factions are like in question for that, but like the people actually fighting, um, might actually agree on a lot of things. They're just on opposite sides. Um, so th- I feel like that's kind of where that sure. falls. But like, wh- wh- where would you where would you put that in this whole debacle? Um, uh, I think especially in the realm of storytelling this might be a hot take this might not um but this is how i view it when i when i'm trying to tell stories you have to know what a villain is the more you muddy that field of what a villain what what objectively is right and wrong in a story the harder it gets to to feel connection to that story Okay. Um, okay. The the less the events of that story makes sense. So in that in that vein, I don't necessarily think that the uh, dog tooth guy was as much of a villain as he is kind of a a side character rival. Yeah, but it's interesting because um, they they introduce but, him as a villain. They introduce him. What does that mean? Does like, he like how? They, they, they introduce what dialogue him, is present that well, he's interested in? They introduce him the same way that they would introduce any other villain in the in the the whole story, where it's like you can tell he's he's he looks intimidating and he looks really strong, and you can tell that he's gonna like try and stop the crew from getting where they need to go, and you know you can tell that he's gonna be, and it's like villain with a light with a loose term, right? Because you don't know anything about him. Um, but it's like when you are watching a story or watching a movie, usually the guy that's getting in the way, the guy who's trying to stop the hero and the, the protagonist, they're usually classified as the villain, you know, because I mean, you could kind of say a similar thing about Bowser in a lot of ways where Bowser isn't really a bad guy, but I mean, it depends on the game, right? Because like, of course, there's like a certain RPGs that frame Bowser as like a pretty decent guy. And then there's some where it's like Bowser's kind of just really selfish and then there's some where it's like dude bowser's actually gonna like take over the world so maybe we should stop this guy but like there are certain contexts where it's like i I just feel like where's the line where uh the villain starts and where does it end because i feel like i feel like from what we've talked about it all depends on like like their morals because usually villains are need to be stopped and not the other way around where like but there are some situations where villains are trying to stop the hero. Um, so I, I feel like those aren't very common. But yeah, they introduced, they introduced this guy in One Piece as a villain. But then it turns out that he wasn't. So it's almost like they wanted you to think he was bad. And then as you find more and more out, out about him, you realize that he's not. Um, and I feel like maybe that was so just part of the vein- storytelling. Um, I think that's just really good subversion of expectation. I don't necessarily classify. I wouldn't classify that guy as a villain. But I feel like some people um, would, and that's why I think it's interesting. Because so, maybe, maybe it, defining yeah, what a villain yeah. is will help people kind of understand this more. As well, in the same vein of of Bowser, yeah, I consider Bowser a villain. He's kidnapping people and imprisoning them in cages. Right, but then you play like Bowser's Inside Story where he's like the hero, you know, and it's like, whoa. Well, (laughs) I, 
but that's like a that's a twist on the character. That's a subversion oh, right. of expectation. Okay. So well, and so you have in to the frame same manner that Superman in yeah, it has to be in the right frame. Well, like his character because should change depending on insights, sorry. yeah, okay. yeah, like depending on like what Superman the situation is. Is very yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, I'm just agreeing with you. It's, uh, I, I think it really just depends on like what the environment and situation revolving the story is kind of like it's almost like there are roles to take uh in a story and depending on what's going on depends on who takes what role and they could change right story story. so uh i'm gonna give this example real quick to kind of show my point yeah. of why it's so important to make a villain because i don't want to necessarily say the world is black and white and you know there's uh because I don't want to say that there's so much nuance and stuff into life, but this is a good example of trying to tell my point. Superman in Injustice, the Injustice game line. Yeah, I, I actually don't know if it was a comic or a game first. It was made by NetherRealm Studios, released on the PlayStation Three, I think. Like the first Injustice, maybe the Xbox. Either way, yeah, the first Injustice. Yeah, it was like I think it was like um, 360 PS3, that kind of era. Okay, but. so anyway, older game, but the very first, the whole premise of the game is what if Superman didn't show restraint? What if he was a villain? What if he was mean and used stuff, his selfish gain? And what happens to, it's interesting because we can follow the whole formula here. Uh, Superman loses Lois Lane, who's pregnant at the time, because he's brainwashed by the Joker and nukes Metropolis. He throws oh, a nuke man. at Metropolis and blows it up. And kills kills his wife and unborn kid, right? Drives him insane. He goes and he kills the Joker. He laser eyes straight through his skull. Very gruesome. Actually, it doesn't show that specific part, but like it's implied, right? Right. Uh, then he takes over the world because he decides that no person should be able to do evil first. You can't forgive someone for the. Or you you. What's the Interesting. word I'm looking for? The consequence should come bef- on the possibility that this person could be evil, not when they become evil, right? And that's what makes oh, Superman okay. a very big villain in this instance. And this is what I mean, is that a hero can change into a villain, a villain can change into a hero, but only after you've defined what a villain is in this in this universe. Once yeah, you've defined okay. that what Superman did was wrong, now you can go into the three-dimensional aspects of it of like, well, he turned evil, but you could kind of understand why he turned evil. So you don't necessarily forgive him for it, but you understand where he's coming from. And then you can have all this moral dilemma dialogue of, is he right? Is he wrong? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I'm choking on uh, oh. story spit. <laughs> I inhaled a flag because I stuck my head out the train window. Um <laughs> But yeah, so th- yeah. that's that's what I mean in that you have to define first what a villain is in the story, and then you can go into the three dimensional like, ooh, is it a villain or is it not a villain? Because you've defined what a villain is. If the if the viewer doesn't know what a villain is in this story, what a villain is classified in as in this story, it's really hard for them to tell who's the hero and who's the villain, and then they don't know who to follow or cheer for. Right. And I think you can lose a story very quickly. Yeah. Um, I absolutely agree with that. Um, like I think you're right on the money. Cause you know, villains they I don't know, like they need they need to exist. Um but they that's, also need they also exactly need to the point <laughs> that I sorry, uh I just want to say this real quick. That's exactly the problem I have with Harley Quinn. Uh, the way that people are trying to take Harley Quinn these days and, and paint her as this like m- tragic hero kind of thing. And yeah. like in Suicide Squad, uh, Suicide Squad stuff, she's treated as this, as this hero that and stuff, but she's not necessarily doing great hero things. She's still blowing up buildings and killing people with reckless abandon. She's just doing it for someone who wants to paint her actions as or she she's kind of brought out of 
jail to fight an evil that no one else can yet. Yeah. Because for whatever well, reason, so... the Justice League aren't available or something. And she's just kind of the next best choice. Well, that doesn't I, I mean wouldn't... she's a hero all of a sudden. I just think because she, you do heroic act doesn't necessarily make you a hero. Yeah, she she leans more on the villain side, but there's definitely like a spectrum of hero and villain, and like in the middle is like anti-hero, where it's like, you know, there are people that are for and against certain things, and there's people that kind of just do what they want. And I feel like Harley Quinn kind of falls into that camp where she's not really. I mean, I don't. I I'm not a huge Harley Quinn. Uh, like I don't know much about her, honestly. But from what I can tell, it's like she's she doesn't really have like this agenda like other villains usually do. She kind of is like a free spirit, kind of just does what she wants. Um, but more often than not, it causes harm to others. Um, so it's I, I think she leans on the villain side. Um, but I, I did. OK, so I want to move into this next question I have, which is because um, we've talked about villains that we like. But do you think that, okay. like, not in terms of, like, design, but, like, when, when a show really makes you hate somebody, you know what I mean? Like, when there's a character in a show that just, you absolutely despise them, do you think that the writer is doing it right? Because if, if, if you're, when it comes to, like, a bad guy or a villain, you should hate them, right? Like, is, I feel like that should come with it. Uh, yes. I think that if you can get a reader to hate your villain, but hate your villain on purpose, not not hate your villain for the way your villain is written, right? But hate your villain for the way they are in the story. Yes. Excellent storytelling. Yes. I almost take that above because we we can be curious and be interested in villains, but I do think it is another thing to masterfully get your audience to absolutely hate the villain. And you love that villain. You think they're cool because of how much you hate them. Because yes. how much maybe maybe you don't have to be the biggest fan of the, that villain, but you can understand that you hate that villain and okay. everyone hates that villain. Okay, I'm glad you, I, that's exactly how I feel. Um, and I wanted to bring this up before I get into that a little more. Uh, so in the series, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, it's a manga anime. Um, there's this thing that is, it's really interesting to me because the guy, I think the, the guy who makes, I think his name is Araki. Uh, people thought for years that this guy hated dogs because in like every single jojo part one through whatever and every part there is like a gruesome dog death that the vil like one of the villains does right just like just completely out of pocket like the dog gets brutally murdered and it's it's awful right it's awful to watch but and people thought for years this guy hated dogs they're like why is he doing this to dogs this is terrible and it, what he said is uh he's like i love dogs very much and so he's like, to me, the fastest way to make the person watching or reading hate the villain is to have them kill a dog. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's right. You know, I, so I, you know, I'm not advocating for, for putting that in your content, but I do think that's an interesting strategy because I'll tell you what, when I was watching it for the first time, I really hated that guy for doing that, doing what he did to the dog. And it worked, you know, to really just show that's where he's at. Um, so I, I, you know, again, I just feel like that's an interesting thing where uh, he, the, the writer himself didn't have any problems with it. His goal was to make the the person consuming the story feel a certain way about the villain, you know, like that 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 was his goal. So I feel like that is right, interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I think hating a villain is important. Uh, but even though there's a lot of villains that I I, so... I really like. <laughs> Yeah, well, what do you, a, what do you have I have another villain sure. in that exact same vein. It when you were talking to me about this kind of villain that you hate, this this person came to mind. Uh, her name is Doctor Smith, and I'm grateful I'm she came up because I was actually a lot of the villains we talked about are dudes. That's fine. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, and she came up as a villain that's uh, a woman. That is, it's it's exactly what you're talking about. The more I watched this person, the more I'm like. 
you need to get hit by a bus, like a space <laughs> yeah. bus and die. Like I, yeah. I hate you so much. Yeah. And it's it's because in so her name is Dr. Smith, and she's in the 2018 Netflix series Lost in Space. Okay. Um it's a it's a, a sci-fi space odyssey kind of adventure um where people get lost in space and they get uh stuck on planets without Wow. spaceship stuff and you know all, all kinds of stuff it's it's pretty good um but dr smith in this she um she's a, sci- a scientist that actually poses as some other scientist to sneak her way onto the ship so it's a, it's already a kind of a slimy thing to do because she took uh the she took the position from someone else because she was going to jail so to escape jail she poses as this doctor mm, okay but she's yeah. not actually a doctor um and she's placed in these positions where she's asked to be a doctor and she's this this kudos to the actress i actually don't hate the actress at all i think the actress does an amazing job at being hateable you know what i mean like she's really good at yes. doing that on purpose uh-huh. which tells me that she's an excellent actress right yes um i feel like it I takes a, it I takes a lot of skill i think like, to play the role of a villain well especially like in movies like i kudos to anybody who right. does villains is it, it, well I don't know, villains are so cold bro <laughs> so her character she not only does she take the possibility of going to space away from this other doctor but she's like placed in these situations where she's supposed to be a medical professional and she like bull craps her way out of it and often it ends up to the detriment of the health of the person if that makes sense. Like she makes the situation worse and somehow always gets away with it. Oh, and she man. plays the victim a lot. Oh, she's able man. to spin things around and she's able to like, you know, just yeah. in situations where the authorities didn't quite see what happened. They just get to the room right after oh, something man. bad happens. Yeah, like... and she's able to spin it immediately into her favor and twist the narrative where she like bends over in pain and she's like, Oh, don't hurt me. And the, and you know, the officials are suddenly like, yeah, I mean, you're, t- oh, you're, dude, you're hurting her. What are you doing? You're, you're making me ticked off just hearing about her. <laughs> it sounds awful. Yeah, exactly. She's, she's a super and every single situation that comes her way she stabs someone in the back at the exact right time and she's slimy and she's um uh seductive and she's clever and sly all in one good thing and she lies and lies and lies without any remorse and in if you were actually to do a kind of like uh an exploration into her behavior it would borderline pretty much on psychopathy she's she's a psychopath like she or maybe a sociopath so she literally does not see anything wrong with what she's doing even though it, oh, it harms yeah. and kills other people yeah it's, um, it's dude it's hard because you know how come there's a difference between like her and like ganondorf because ganondorf i'm like bro i love this guy even though he has done some pretty terrible things but he's epic and he's cool and all that stuff and then there's people like her where it's like man like the story, I I almost feel like the story would be more enjoyable without her. But I, they do play a role in the story. But every time they're on this, screen, this I'm just like, plays such Geez. a good role. Yeah, so it's like it's it's like a necessary well, thing. Um, but like they're like I will always prefer the other kind of villain to that kind. Um, but maybe that's maybe that maybe that's all on purpose. You know, maybe that's the whole point. Um. Maybe yeah. she, maybe her yeah, role I, is I to make all that. the other characters look better. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, sure. I mean, the whole time you have a very clear identifying person that you don't want to root for, you know? Yes, yeah. It's, that's a, that's exactly what I was getting to earlier, where you want the, you have to define what a villain is in your mind so that you can know who to cheer for, to cheer against. You and I view kidnapping children and using them as hostages and twisting a misunderstanding into your favor yeah and killing dogs bro that is not okay killing dogs that is all not that kind of okay stuff. see so but we view that as evil because we have this definition of villainy in our mind yeah so that's what makes her such a good villain is because she leans so hard into what we consider villainy 
yeah. and she embraces it and she enjoys it. You know, that's what makes us be like, how dare you as a as a character? How dare you enjoy yeah. this? And I, uh, I, I think because we're wrapping up here in just a sec, but I, uh, I, I really think that like in terms of the villains that I like, I think they all they all know what they want. They're all very confident and like it's like they know what they're doing and they're sticking to their guns and like it's it's like almost like super admirable and uh like attractive in a way not not in a like a romantic way or anything but like there's like this attractiveness to like their confidence you know just like like maybe that's something i want i want to be uh super confident in my ideals and morals in the same way they are because you gotta like, respect Thanos because yeah. villains man, does he he gets the job done yeah villains are very they're they're some of the most driven characters of all time and i don't know they just have that energy that just make they make me want to go out and do and follow my dreams you know uh even though their dreams are <laughs> usually not something you'd want to strive for um but yeah dude i think that's one reason why i like to uh, like to play villains too when i play like fighting games and stuff is like there's just this energy to it that like i just love but just that like get them energy you know like i don't know um yeah so yeah uh do you have any other thoughts about villains before we end here is that we touched on everything that i was, was thinking about I, I think we've had a pretty good pretty good dialogue i feel like um by the end of this for anyone who's watching you have a hopefully you have a better picture of kind of how to write your villain yeah and really some of the elements that need to be present in order to flesh that villain out in whatever way you want to you can be so flexible with it but it's there there are some like hard pillars of a villain as it were yeah you know? and you can even do multiple villains right we didn't even touch on that but some of my favorite stories and movies have multiple villains like the Puss in Boots movie, multiple That's true. villains. That's true. You know, like uh, there are so many ways to do it, and you know, uh, just human. You know, because the the whole mystery episode about curiosity, like it goes right at hand in hand with this. Like people like to like dive into the psychology of like why your characters are the way they are. That's why backstories are important. That's why all of this stuff is. It's important for your character to be well written because people like having something they can relate to that's realistic but they also like finding out like man how did we get to this point and then and then you actually get there like it's very satisfying um so with that said uh right. and uh yeah but, i wanted to encourage the the listeners tell us your favorite villain tell us why yes. you like villains yes give us please a, a whole dialogue yes give us give us your favorite uh, villain and why please favorite villain and why and we may just go over that in a future episode. Yeah, we and might. We might revisit through. this. And I, I would, would love, love to do that. It. Yeah. Well, uh, that's been it for me. Uh, I, I've been Logan. I've been Kai. I make sure to ride a train right into that subscribe button. Yeah, into train right button. into it, bro. Ride a train right into it. Ride a train right train wreck into the subscribe button. button, into the share button. Dude, you better share it to your grandpa tomorrow. Okay? Oh. Don't don't miss it. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, but yeah, we will see you in the next story dive. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>